you been to New Jersey before? Yes, I have. In fact, I've shown at the Ocean Gallery several times. So, yeah, I've got a lot of uh, regular collectors from there, and um, they're lovely people. They always put on an amazing show, and uh, I think they've refurbished the gallery, and they've, they've hung 127 of my pieces, so it's a huge show. That is fantastic. I, I was also looking up a little bit of uh, the gallery there, and it's, it is quite large, so you're going to have a nice... Uh... Yes. <laughs> they asked me to fill it, and I did. <laughs> uh, but uh, and actually, what's really unique about this show is that every style, pretty much, that I've ever painted will be on show there because I have changed styles at different times in my career, and they've got some early works all the way up to the latest pieces, and um, a lot of the inspirations for designs that I do for uh, scarves and, um, and textiles, which I take from original watercolor paintings and do repeats on things like that so it's a and then of course they've got sculptures of the open hearts and they've got the flowers the beach scenes the, the impressionist pieces and uh um, and, and a lot of obviously open heart material too let's start off with your wonderful artistic talent did that develop at an early age yes i mean i know because my mother meticulously kept everything of mine but from a very early age, I was drawing, 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 and that was a passion. I had this meticulous handwriting, but I had really beautiful illustrations on the covers of books and inside, so my mother kept them all. So yes, I, I was drawing and creating art from an early age. By the time I was 15, I didn't have enough money to pay for the ballet shoes that I needed to dance with the Kirov Ballet at Covent Garden, so I started my own company uh, designing and embroidering my designs on blouses that were see-through because at that time everyone was burning their bras and <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. So I, I embroidered a blue tit and a green tit and, and put them in the appropriate places. And next thing I knew, I, the biggest, uh, most important high-end boutique in London um, gave me all their see-through blouses and said, do whatever you can with these, we can't sell them. So I I used to do that and crochet and knit and, and you know, study and, and dance. And I so I've always... I've always been creative, and I've always been, um, you know, I started a company at 15. That's amazing. So, wow. so when people say, well, what makes you suddenly decide, you know, to be an artist or sell art or to sell, you know, I, I now do, of course, jewelry, and I was doing handbags, I'm doing art to wear, and on jadesingmore.com, you can see there's a lot of different products and things that I do, but um, everything I do comes from my art, and, and in the same way my art always comes from life, from what's gone on in my life, what I feel about things, what makes me happy. It's a very healing process for me to do art. I love your painting the beach. I saw that one right off the bat, and that is just breathtaking. Oh, um, thank you. How long does it take, given your very, I would imagine, very busy schedule? What is your work routine and your creative routine in, in, your, in your artwork? Well... In the same way that it is with my acting, there are moments of high focus where I'm only painting for a while, and that's it. In fact, I have to be reminded to eat and drink because I forget, I just get so carried away. And then when I'm filming, sometimes I, usually I bring my watercolors with me. I always have artwork with me. I've got my watercolors with me right now. I mean, wherever I am, it's what I just like to do for myself. So often, on film sets, I'll be seen filming uh, a painting. Oh. But I do have a, a major studio at home, and I've got everything there, and I do oils and acrylics and big things out there. Nothing in my life is routine. Nothing, literally. I mean, I never know whether I start work at four in the morning or ten in the morning or middle of the night. You know, it's, and I don't know which country I'm going to be in. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and, uh, and you know, life changes on the dime every every minute according to what's going on in the world or you know, everything like that. So when I have time and I can, I paint. The rest of the time, you know, if I'm out and about, I've got my camera going and I'm finding all kinds of images that are going to inspire a painting. Actually, four pieces at the gallery are done by my son, Sean M. Flynn. Mm -hmm. You can look him up, Sean M. Flynn Photography. And uh, I was basically dancing on the beach and he was photographing me and <laughs> in his style and they're extraordinary. So that, I suppose, is, you know... Um, something we did together Aww. and and uh, yeah so uh, all my kids are very artistic most of them photographers and musicians you know it's a very 
very creative space in my home. My, my grandchildren, when they're there, they're painting all the time. So, hmm. and, and so, and I've been painting on Zoom with people during COVID. A lot. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. I painted with um, old people in Dallas who were stuck in an old people's home and couldn't get out, couldn't see their families. And um, again, doing painting lessons with them. And we were actually painting cockerels. <laughs> well, I was anyway, because I, I have a lot of chickens in the garden. And I just, I felt I was in the mood to paint those since I, you know, felt kind of stuck in there. And um, I also then auctioned off a lot of them for charity for the Open Hearts Foundation. So I'm always involved with art, always. Let's go back to your not so humble beginnings because you just made a big splash when at a, at a very early age with uh with live and let die and i'm a big fan of james bond as is my boss so he he definitely wanted me to ask you about your your early time with that and working with roger moore and yafet Kodo, who sadly died recently um that must have been an amazing experience for you at that age it was it was quite daunting i was a very innocent 20 year old and they were looking for the Bond girl on this occasion that was not a sex symbol. They were looking for uh, someone that could play a virgin. So I was jokingly say I, they were thin on the ground in the 70s. And, and <laughs> I was far too well brought up. So I kind of ticked the box. Um, I was, you know, there was no audition or anything. They saw me uh, starring in a, a television series in England called The Aneedon Line. And um, having seen me in the first episode of this show, they called my agent and said, we want her. He said, she's not available. They then watched episode two, and we didn't know that Harry Saltz and Cubby Broccoli no longer spoke to each other. So we get the age, got a second call, and it was from the other, the other one. Actually, mm -hmm. the second time was Saltzman. And my agent said, well, you know, they make other movies, but I don't think they ever made any other movies. <laughs> so you might as well go and meet them. So I met them, and uh, they had a fight over who'd found me first. And then I sort of put my hand up and said, well, you both saw me at the same time. I was on television. And the secretary rushed me into the back room to have a cup of tea. They fought it out. They then called my agent, who tried to see if he could get me out of the uh, BBC thing for two weeks and, and, you know, reorganize the schedule, which ultimately they were able to do. But it was touch and go to the last second. So, you know, getting it was quite crazy. And then... You know, I had to keep it secret for two weeks and they made up all these crazy stories about me because they had to come up with some story for the press. <laughs> so that was the first time I found myself being um, badly quoted. And the, the famous quote was, I like to run naked through tall grass, <laughs> which I can guarantee I have never done. But my father, being a doctor, having read it, called me in all seriousness and said, darling, I don't think it's a good thing to do because you will get cuts. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, obviously he knew I was going to do that, but, you know, it was hilarious. And then, of course, he actually read the book, and I think Solid was dragged over the coral reefs in the back of a motorboat, so he said, that's dangerous too, don't do that either. The Bond film, I could go on and on, and, and it was a famous moment that Roger and I both got very, very ill with dysentery when we were out in Jamaica. Oh. Not, not anything that, you know, you really want to talk about, but <laughs> we, we were in the middle of nowhere, Jamaica, and they only had one tiny little trailer, only one, mm -hmm. and we had to share it, and we're both sort of lying there on this bunk, on bunk beds opposite one another, clearly not feeling terribly well, very queasy, and uh, somebody came and uh, smashed into the caravan, Oh, and, no. we fell, and we fell on the ground on top of one another. Oh, <laughs> oh my so, gosh. Yeah, I, I fell on top of them twice. That was once. The other time was when we were a scene where we had to escape from uh, the voodoo scene. And mm -hmm. um, he taps the, the uh, whatever it is, the, the stone, the and, 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 the, altar, and yeah. the whole thing goes down. But there was a fork truck lift at, at uh, Pirate Studios. And they'd been turned into like a, you know, a stone that came down. And we just sort of had to come down this fork truck lift and pretend we were escaping. But the fork truck lift man had pressed the wrong thing and the thing collapsed. Oh, I, no. And uh, I was wearing high heels and uh, I was about to be trapped underneath it with my leg. And uh, the last second, uh, Roger Moore grabbed me by the hair, some of which was mine and some of which was, uh, you know, a mm -hmm. wig piece. And I fell with my arm and, and uh, an elbow straight into a part of his anatomy that didn't recover very quickly. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So, yes, it was dangerous. The 
the danger of playing James Bond. <laughs> well, I have to bring up another <laughs> iconic role that you yeah. had uh, in, in the 70s, a little bit later, because I'm a big science fiction fan, and I have to ask you about your role as, as Serena. It was short-lived, but definitely memorable on the original, and I still think the best, Battlestar Galactica. Um, and I also had interviewed uh, the late Richard Hatch years years ago. Um, was your role supposed to be limited, or were you no, not I, interested in the series? It's actually another very good story. So, basically, um, Glenn Larson mm -hmm. uh, asked me to play Serena, and uh, he was the first person to get me a job and, a, and a, a work permit in America. I'd come over for six weeks to try and make it, and and on the last day he got me a role in McLeod. And then, of course, he, he hired me for various things. But So he hired me for this. I was the only person that was not supposed to be in the series. And in the original script, I died of galactic cancer. So I spent two hours playing a memorable, amazing um, role of a, of, a, of a woman who, you know, goes through the end of the world with Boxy in her arms and get, the, loses, gets the daggett and, mm -hmm. and um, falls in love with... Um, you know, with Richard Hatch's character, and then dies tragically of galactic cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, they tested it, and apparently I tested higher than anyone they had to deal with. So, yeah. And uh, so apparently, so uh, they then reshot it without me knowing. and cut out everything where I was either looking sick or talking about being sick or dying, and um, called me up and said, we'd like you to do the series. And I said, well, I'm dead. And he said, not really. I said, well, <laughs> I said, well we figured out a way that you're still alive. I said, what? I said, I'm dead. I, I spent the whole time dying. He said, well, we cut all that out. I said, well, then I must be doing pretty much nothing. He said, well, don't worry about it. You're, you're alive. And I said, well, but I don't want to do a series. And they said, yes, you must. You have to. And in long story short, they kept offering me more and more and more and more and more silly money. Mm -hmm. And then, and Lorne Green kept begging me and, and then I just said, okay, here's the deal. I'll do two episodes and you can have Serena do whatever you wanted to do. So in two episodes, they had me flying a battleship, as I recall, marrying, marrying Richard yeah. Hatch. Mm -hmm. and goodness knows, everything they, they could possibly put in a whole series, they had me do in two episodes. And, and then that was it. Then I was supposed to be dead. But apparently I wasn't dead because I never actually got to watch um, Battlestar. I think the only person that hasn't really watched it. Um, although I must have watched mine at some point. But uh, I do remember going shopping once and um, looking for um, uh, looking you know, for food. And, and this guy came up to me and said, oh, you're deep frozen. And I said, what? I'm sorry. And he said, you're deep frozen. And uh, I said, what, what are you talking about? He said, um, in Battlestar Galactica, you'll come back. <laughs> so, <laughs> So that, you know, I thought, oh, that's interesting. I was looking for canned goods, and I was apparently in the frozen section, so you <laughs> knew. <laughs> Well, well, John Colicos was also killed off in the uh, in the movie, but of course they they cut that out too because you know Baltar was a wonderful villain. So yes, yes. <laughs> um, 1980 somewhere in time is just such a classic, a romance science fiction story. What was it like working with, with Christopher Reeve and and Christopher Plummer? Well, uh, Christopher Reeve, were, well, Christopher Plummer, of course, is phenomenal actor absolutely phenomenal um and i've done two movies and i did a, another thing called crossings as well uh christopher reeve however that um ended up becoming a great love in my life um and a lot of the magic you see on screen was real and we kept it secret for a very long time for various reasons although we were single at that time when we were together mm -hmm. and um we remained very close friends until the day he died so that movie is very important to me it's very meaningful. Yeah. It, it's such a classic. You can watch that over and over again. And, uh, I know people keep asking me, saying, you oh, know, we should do a remake and I should play the old lady and the rest of it. But I think there was a magic when we did it about it not being a big movie. It was a little movie that just worked. It would just, it, it, it had a, a magic. I, I'm, I'm sure you could remake it with another actress. But, um, I know there was there there was there was something that happened there with Chris and I that um, uh, that was just special. Art imitated life, and life imitated yeah. art. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It really did. I mean, the story of of us could 
make as, as good a movie as the movie itself almost. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, but I'm I'm also a big fan of of Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, which you were phenomenal in. In fact, I just saw uh, Chad Allen's episode of um, Star Trek The Next Generation was on last night, and I watched it for the umpteenth time. So uh, um, it was just uh, such a groundbreaking show and had such a wonderful cast. I, I was sorry to hear about Orson Bean last year, or actually uh, 2020. We lose tr track of time with this pandemic. That was just such a devastating accident. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Terrible. I mean, uh, he, he was so, so vibrant and full of life, you know, it was, it was really awful. But, you know, we're all very close. In fact, I was talking to Joe Lando about an hour ago. And oh. he, he's he's going to do a sully on my house for me. I said, <laughs> I said, I need, to, I, I'm, I'm not home right now. And there's a, there's a hole in the wall and, and I, I don't trust anyone to tell me, you know, how and whether it should be fixed. I said, would you go and do a sully for me? Would you go and check it out? So he's there right now so uh sally and michaela live on in uh in our <laughs> contemporary form um joe and jane and i help jay, joe when i can joe helps me and joe and jane are a team Still and you had a child during the fourth season your daughter uh, Kate. uh yeah yes so we named the child katie that was um the name of my daughter katie um so that's where we took the name from and then uh Joe went and had four children and had one girl. He names her Kate. So we all have Kates. <laughs> we, both, we both have a Kate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You must have so many fond memories of that series. Um, oh, uh, unbelievable. I, I think, you know, however, it was hard to top the relationship that developed with Johnny, Johnny Cash and June. Mm -hmm. That came yes. directly from Dr. Quinn. And that ended up in Walk the Line. Yeah, uh, Johnny and June gave us the rights to their life, and we came up with that movie. And then Jim Mangles came and then directed it at the last minute. Yeah, so that was that was amazing because we did all the research on that. We were they trusted us; they didn't trust anyone else, and uh, and I think we did them proud. And uh, I think it was such a great movie, and and you know it was a it was a movie about something. It was about redemption, and uh, not just a sort of chronological story of of a man. So, mm. yeah, that's great. Now, did your interest in producing start with um, with that or with the second sequel movie? Uh, when did when did you start to to really producing? Um, I think um, when I was uh, with James Keach, mm -hmm. um, we he was a producer as well. So mm -hmm. when I met him. Um, I, I wanted to make my to produce my first movie. My agent rather, you know, smartly said, "Well, there's a terrific director who was an actor, um, who also writes and produces, and uh, I think you know the two of you together would be great because he can you know show you the ropes and you can work together on it." And that was James. And of course, and then we ended up getting married and having children, and being together for 26 years. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, pretty much every movie that James and I did together, I was one of you know, a producer on as well. And but now we're, we're no longer together, unfortunately, very sadly, been mm. for about nine years. But uh, I, I'm now producing myself. And my partner uh, that I'm with, David Green, has been a filmmaker, producer, director, mega, mega. I mean, uh, uh, he's he, he built his own companies. He had September Films and then another film company, which he, he's got so many projects going right now so you know for some reason i always end up around people that that really know how to do that and i know which part of producing i'm good at which part um you know i leave to to other people but if i'm in it and i'm producing i i get very involved in putting it together making it happening making it happen the casting the writing etc and then when i'm on the set um, i put my acting hat on and that's it hmm. In, in 2019, you were quoted somewhere as referencing a possible reboot of, of Dr. Quinn. Is that well, going anywhere? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you what happens is I'm asked all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, there are, we didn't know if we had the rights. But apparently recently, Beth Sullivan, who did the original, said that according to 
the guild, she had the rights back because of X amount of time and because she was the original writer on it. Mm-hmm. So um, she put together um, an amazing script and a sort of what they call a Bible, in other words, of where the story would go and who the characters would now be and, and, and the trajectory and everything. And we pitched it to a couple of places, but they kept saying to us, no one's interested in Westerns. Well, I'm looking at television right now, and there's a lot of Westerns. But anyway, it, it's there. Um, it's there if anyone wants it um where you know it's it's there are so many streaming channels and so many different places these days um so i i find it hard to imagine that it would be the only show that wasn't done as a remake but ours would not be a remake ours would be a continuation oh that's time-wise. good 30 it would be uh 30 years later that's good no that's... actually not 30 years it'd be uh, 25 years later 20 four years it would be turn of the century by now and um it would be mostly the younger characters but of course joe and i would be very much in there as well and all the the, the ones that were in the original they all want to come back so oh, in the that's... way it's been written everyone would would come in and have a part in it but you know it would very much be about a very young generation as well and what was going on at that time well that's good to hear being a fan of the show i i would I would much prefer a continuation than a than a, you oh, know, yeah. a sequel no, than, no. A, a, than a than a reboot. Not a reboot. No. Well, the other thing is that um, I've got Harry Wilde right now. I don't know if you yes, that. I know. Tell yeah. me, tell me about your current role. That's well, that one is getting. I mean, all the Doctor Quinn fans are now insane about Harry Wilde. I mean, they've gone nuts for it, and they they uh, gave it a chance on Acorn to such a degree that apparently um, we went number one. So um, AMC and Acorn are very happy with me. <laughs> they sold it globally, as they as Dr. Quinn had been sold globally. So it's kind of like my new Dr. Quinn, except it isn't anything like Dr. Quinn. But the people who love Dr. Quinn are loving Harry Wilde. And play an English professor in Dublin University who's never been married, has a son who's a detective, um, drinks too much wine. Um, <laughs> she wants to have a man. She has him when she doesn't want him anymore. She kicks him out. She does what she wants, when she wants, as she wants, and she's super smart. And, uh, you know, when she realizes that her son, who's the detective, it has no idea how to catch the bad guy, and she's figured it out because of her knowledge of some very obtuse um, play written in the 15th century or earlier, um, you know, she, she solves crimes with her, her knowledge of, of books and history alongside her sidekick, um, who's this 15-year-old kid from the wrong side of Dublin who's only ever known, um, you know, a, a, a alcoholism and crime and um, in his family. And, and, um, and now he's, he's running around trying to help her be street smart whilst she's making sure he learns his literature and passes his tests whilst being pursued by bad guys. Yeah, they're trying to catch. So it's very funny too. It, 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 it looks gotten, it. I, 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 I've gotten the best reviews of anything I've done for a long wow. time for this thing. Yeah, people are loving it. Yeah. I, I unfortunately don't have Acorn TV. Maybe that will change soon because we're changing it's, our our cable systems. But uh, I looked at the trailer and, and it looks very yeah. just the trailer alone uh, yeah. grabbed well, my you interest. Can, uh, you can get it for free for the first month, so you can binge watch my eight hours. Okay. Um, and then I think it only costs five dollars a month or something if you want to continue, but you don't have to. But it's a uh, it's a, a heck of a of a good um, streaming channel actually. Oh, it's streaming. Okay. English and Irish and Australian, New Zealand, some French. Um, really great, great series. Intelligent. Um, a lot of murder mystery. What they call light murder mystery. I don't know how light a murder or a mystery is, but mine mine has a lot of laughs in it. That's for sure. Well, I know at the Oscars you had mentioned, uh, you know, Coda, and and also you had mentioned the impact of the streaming services in the entertainment business. Um, so, yes. I mean, just the media is now the line between motion pictures and and series and mini series is is so much different. And and at, at one time, you know, you you were dubbed the queen of of the old style yes. mini series. So this must be an exciting time to 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 see all this develop you know i mean it is i i was greedy when i was younger i i wanted to not just be an actress but also be a mother 
And so, you know, somehow or other, I ended up doing more television than I did as many films as maybe I would have liked to have done. But now what's happening is, unless it's a huge major blockbuster or a film that is going to do the film festivals and might end up as, an, uh, you know, a, a, a nomination film for, a, for an Oscar, um, really what everyone is watching is um, basically what we did in the miniseries, but now they're doing it in, in, on streaming, so they don't have to worry about stopping every 10 minutes for a commercial, and, um, uh, you know, and, and they don't have to worry about standards and practices either, because, um, you know, it's, it's streaming, it's specific to the, the culture of the person that streams it. So, you know, depending on your genre, there's something for everyone, and I think it's, uh, it's fantastic. Um, I'm, um, and I, of course, you know, the, the major, major film stars, theatre stars, everybody, they're all, all doing it, that, you know, the, the whole line between, you know, being a television or a film star now has changed completely. Well, you've done just about everything between your stage work, comedy, and in roles like The Wedding Crashers, um, your jewelry designs, the foundation, uh, producing, being a mother, obviously probably the, the, the most important role. And what would you like to do next? Uh, or are you very happy with everything that is, that is currently going on? You seem very, very busy with your amazing life. Well, I honestly, I, I, I've got so much on my plate already, um, but I've recently been made um, um, a member of Horatio Alger, so I'm very involved with trying to help some of those kids who, 40% of whom grew up in the foster care system and managed somehow to excel and go to major colleges and get the scholarship and who all want to do something to make a difference to help those that got left behind. I'm very involved with trying to save the planet with uh, freelance.org. Um, in fact, they're going to be putting out some uh, PSAs that I did where I represented Gaia, Mother Earth, uh, mm -hmm. trying to save the planet. I'm very involved with um, the stopping human and wildlife trafficking. Yes. A big issue um, for me. Um, so I honestly, every day I have a different hat on, basically, <laughs> <laughs> literally. But they're all basically the same thing. It's, it's. I'm a human being that cares about what's going on in the world. I, I don't get involved in politics, but I de definitely get involved in um, as much as I possibly can, um, trying to see if this what we can do to save this precious planet and to save. Um, uh, ourselves from even more COVID when, you know, they, this ridiculous nonsense of, of taking wild animals out of their natural habitats and yes, um, yeah. wondering why we get infected with these terrible things. Yeah. Exactly. Um, when uh, is you, will your exhibit be moving to other areas of, of the country or? Um... Uh, no, usually uh, what happens is um, each gallery makes their own selection and then they book a show with me but because i've been because of covid and because i've been working so much uh, i haven't done shows for, for a long time mm -hmm. um, no one has and no. um and this one is huge so um it's a very big deal um but i have a confession i found out yesterday that i tested positive so i am praying that i found out late that I tested positive because I feel fine now mm -hmm. and I'm hoping and praying that I'm physically you know able to be in the gallery with the people but I will definitely be in the gallery with the people on live on zoom for three hours regardless so they can all talk to me in live time but obviously I want to make sure that I don't infect anyone or hurt anyone right yeah I mean this this saga isn't isn't over yet um I no mean, by any and then, means I, I've, I, I managed three years without getting it, and I, I was filming in Spain, Australia, you know, Ireland. I mean, I, I just can't believe that. Anyway, here I am. I'm, at least I'm in the neighborhood, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I might have to wave from a window with a mask on, but I will be there. Well, we're very happy to have you in New Jersey. I hope some, someday you'll be able to tour a little bit more about our state. You know, around our state, but uh, you're in, in beautiful surroundings in Cape oh, May County there in, in Stone Harbor. It, it's stunning. I, I, I love doing shows there. I absolutely love it. That beach is beautiful. 
and you know it's just wonderful seeing all those people having so much fun i mean i live on a beach in malibu but it's it, this is a different kind of beach this is really cool yes i'm i'm talking to you from ortley beach which is a part of tom's river township in ocean county uh, oh. which we have a, a boardwalk uh you know, we're not too far from Seaside Heights. It's 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 a little bit of a different feel than Cape May County, but it's it's uh, I love it. And um, you know, we we have I think some of the best beaches uh, anywhere. Um, you so. do, you do, and I have been to them. I can't remember which ones I've been to, but I have been all around uh, in New Jersey. But I do, I you know, Ocean Galleries has always been incredibly incredibly good to me and. And um, with, they've got some amazing uh, clients there who've been collecting my work for many, many years. So, um, you know, it's always lovely to see people that have been living with your babies, like I like to think of my artwork as my babies, <laughs> um, in their homes. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a daunting thing. It's one thing when someone turns on the TV and watches you, streams it, and then it doesn't bother watching again. But it's another thing if it, they actually wake up every day and you're hanging on their wall, you know. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Definitely. You have such beautiful work. I was going through all the, the different pictures. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I, I really, I really appreciate this and, uh, and, and talking to you and getting insights on some of your, your, your many different, uh, activities through life. I mean, you're a businesswoman, you're an artist, you're a mother, you're an actress, you're a producer, you, you know, um, philanthropist, writer, well, yes, yeah, yeah. designer, I know it's boring. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't bungee jump, and I'm really bad at computers. <laughs> uh, I yeah, well, well, I work in the in the field. I'm still not, I would say, tech savvy. I get very frustrated when things just don't work properly on the computer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I can identify that. And bungee well, my, jumping, I don't think I should do. Mercifully, I've got a number of uh, kids who are really brilliant at it, one of whom is showing at the gallery. He's got four pieces. The collaboration he did with me is photography, Sean. Um, and he's the one that's just written a comedy that's going out right now. We may, may well be doing a comedy series together. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's an amazingly talented man. And um, my daughter, Katie J. Flynn, photography, worth checking out. She's extraordinary. And then my son, John, he's a rock musician. He's about to put a proper website up about his stuff very soon. So, you know, I've been, um, when I'm not producing myself, I am I seem to have passed my enthusiasm for the arts onto my children in completely different ways. They, they're they not doing what I'm doing, but they are very creative and very artistic. You certainly have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I look for. I hope to, to get down there. I'm, I'm not sure if if I. Oh, I hope able you to. can. Um, and I hope I hope I can be there, double masked, waving at everyone. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. But I wish you the best, also with with Harry Wild and your other ventures. And I really hope that the the sequel uh, series of Doctor Quinn comes to be. You know. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.